Hello everyone. In this video, I discuss the issue of centering in statistical analyses. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials related to multivariate statistical methods and models and often including the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for free workshops and other videos and other resources, as well as a link to my newsletter where I present weekly statistical tips as well. So in this video, I will address the issue of centering, which confuses many people when they run, for example, regression analysis or multi-level models. And so I want to talk about some of the basic ideas. Why do we center? What is this good for? And how does this help? Uh, or with what issues does this help and what does it make better when you run your statistical analyses. So centering in general means you subtract some sort of constant value from your scores before conducting a statistical analysis. For example, often what we do is we center at the sample mean. So we subtract the sample mean from all of the individual scores and then we have a centered variable where zero uh, indicates the value of zero indicates the sample mean and so then the values are grouped so to say centered around the sample mean such that when somebody has a score of zero on the centered variable then that indicates that this person is exactly average or has exactly the sample mean as a score and when you have a person with a negative value, it would indicate that their raw score is below average. When you have a um, score that is positive, it would mean the person is above average. So um, first of all, so to say centering makes the scores more interpretable, so to say, because it includes information about the sample mean into the score. From a raw score that is uncentered, you couldn't see that. Without knowing the mean, you wouldn't know is the person at the average, is the person below average, or is the person above average. But when you have a centered score, then you can tell immediately because of the sign of the score or if the score is negative, you know the person is exactly average. So it means it makes the score more informative. Now, why is that something that is meaningful in regression analysis in particular, where we often um, do centering or why is this useful particularly for regression? Because in regression analysis, first of all, we have an intercept term and that is true for both linear regression and logistic regression and other regression models. So we have an intercept or additive constant in our regression equation. And so um, the intercept is interpreted as the expected value of our outcome or dependent variable when all predictor variables are zero. So and that is um, one reason for centering is that oftentimes in the social sciences at least we have predictor variables that have no meaningful zero point. So for example, my field is psychology. In psychology, we study, for example, personality, we study intelligence, we study emotions, we study subjective well-being. And so oftentimes, a value of zero for these types of variables doesn't make a ton of sense. So having zero intelligence is not meaningful, having uh, zero emotion is not meaningful, zero personality and so on. These scores often don't mean anything or variables like age, for example, you typically don't have people who have um, an age of zero in your study unless you study newborns. Um, but most people, most studies are done with um, adults or with at least teenagers or children who have more than zero years of age. And so that is one reason then that the intercept in a regression analysis cannot be meaningfully interpreted when one or more predictor variables or independent variables have um, no meaningful zero point. Now there are variables that do have a meaningful zero point in the social sciences and other fields like for example having zero siblings makes sense. Having zero income could make sense if somebody is unemployed um, or something like that. So there are cases where that does make sense and where, the, where there's a natural zero point um, 
zero panic attacks is another example for example if somebody is healthy then they wouldn't have any uh, negative outcomes and so this is something that can happen so you have to decide so to say on a case-by-case -case basis whether you should center or not to make your intercept more meaningful now a lot of people say well who cares about the intercept i'm really interested in my regression slope coefficients and not the intercept and for the regression slope coefficients this doesn't make a difference and um, for r squared it doesn't make a difference in linear regression whether i center or not and that's all true so that's all correct so to a point so to say so for a regular linear regression model where you have only additive effects it is true that the slope coefficients are unaffected by centering only the intercept would be affected but oftentimes we also run regression analysis with interactive terms meaning we run moderated regression analysis where we have product terms interactions between independent variables and in that situation it is different in that situation also the lower order terms are affected so the lower order slope coefficients are affected by centering or non-centering and so um, there it is really important to center because or at least to center predictor variables that don't have a meaningful zero point because otherwise the slope coefficients of the lower order regression terms uh, cannot be meaningfully interpreted and so then that not only concerns the intercept but also the slope coefficients when you have an interaction term now the centering centering does not affect the coefficient for the product term with an interaction or moderated regression so that slope coefficient for the interaction will be unchanged whether you center or not but the lower order terms they will be different and they will be typically more interpretable with centering as compared to not centering now a very good book um, for that and um, that explains this in detail is the regression book by Cohen, Cohen, West and Aiken, 2003, Applied Multiple Regression Correlation Analysis for the Behavioral Sciences, or also the book Aiken and West, 1991, on moderated regression analysis, also discusses the issue of centering um, in great detail for moderated regression with interaction terms. Now, this, the issue is similar when you have non-linear terms in your regression model so for example when you have quadratic or cubic terms x squared or uh, x uh, cubed then that also is, is a similar issue with um, centering that it makes sense to center another uh, reason for centering with interaction models is that th uh, there's an issue of collinearity oftentimes so oftentimes the uh, product term since it contains both independent variables will be highly collinear, highly correlated with the predictors and that can sometimes cause some issues and so that is called non-essential collinearity, this collinearity that arises um, in a uh, or that can be removed by centering the predictor the predictor variables before forming the interaction term so that's another argument for centering when you have a moderated regression analysis or also when you have a non-linear regression analysis with x squared x times x as a predictor that x squared will be highly correlated typically with x and so in order to remove some of that collinearity you can center x first before computing x squared or um, center x1 and x2 first before forming their product for an interaction term so that's another reason to center now where else do we use centering a lot in statistical analysis when we do multi-level analysis with multi-level analysis we also have to think about centering and there it is actually a more complex issue because there you have the choice between grand mean centering and group mean centering so you can either center your predictor variables at the overall mean or at the cluster mean when you have um, cluster data and multi-level analysis and depending on how you do it you can get um, very different results because the results with grand and group mean centering mean something very different but with multi-level modeling it is also important because or it's important to center for the interpretation of the results and for that it is very important to really study this issue in detail and 
to think about it carefully because it greatly affects the interpretation of your results. Now I can't cover this in um, in full detail here in this video, but um, I just want to um, make sure that you have an, an understanding of that. If you use multi-level modeling, then carefully think about grand mean and group mean centering. And there are some good papers out there that I'm linking here in the description that um, talk about um, those different forms of centering. For example, a chapter by Craig Enders where he discusses this in detail and um, shows the differences between grand mean and group mean centering. So in summary, centering is an important method for making the results of regression analyses more interpretable in particular when you have interaction terms or quadratic terms or in multi-level analysis where we have also potentially cross-level interaction effects and so centering can help you make the results more interpretable. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, please hit the like button in case you like this video and check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next week.